Hey there, I'm Emily, also known as the Drone Angel, and today we'll be taking a deeper dive into the Mavic 3 Cine and its most talked about features to determine if it's the ultimate drone for the professional or if it's just overhyped. As the latest release in DJI's impressive Mavic line, saying that a lot of us in the droning community had high hopes for the Mavic 3 and Mavic 3 Cine is an understatement. And keeping in mind that this is a pro drone, I really think it fulfills most of those hopes. Yes, I said most. It does fall short in a few areas, but we'll get into that. But before we get started, please take a moment and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date on drone news and tips. With the Cine Premium Combo costing $4,999, it was clear from the start that this was meant to be a drone for professional pilots. No longer are we looking at drones fit even for the hobbyists with deep pockets. Despite all the pressure for the normal Mavic 3 and the Cine to be stunning at launch, DJI rushed to push it to the market in November 2021. For better or for worse, they made the choice to delay certain firmware features until January. I know they wanted it out before Christmas, but they probably should have just waited. Since we've now received three firmware updates, I felt it was time to give Cine a proper shakedown slash review. Either way, it's worth reevaluating this drone now that it's a more complete package. If you missed last weekend's video discussing what accessories come with the drone package, I'm going to leave the card somewhere up here so you can get caught up. Since DJI advertised the M3E as having a whole 46 minutes worth of flight time, I had no choice but to test it out immediately at my favorite spot, Newport Beach. Unfortunately, but predictably, it doesn't fly the full 46 minutes. In the conditions I was flying in, it ended up being closer to like 37, 38 minutes before I needed to bring it back. It felt a little bit like a letdown at first, especially after the battery life was hyped up by DJI and drone enthusiasts, but in hindsight, I'm really not that disappointed. It's a big improvement compared to previous models and will give professional pilots plenty of wiggle room while flying. The Mavic 3's USB mode helps preserve the battery life even more. You just switch it into USB mode and you can then offload content without the drone being fully on, saving both the battery life and the drone's motors. The Mavic 3 Cine is the Mavic 2 Pro, but better in many ways. One of these ways is the new and improved omnidirectional obstacle avoidance sensors. Omnidirectional meaning we finally have sensors on every side of the drone and not just most. Since it hasn't been a very you know, helpful feature in previous models, it's been easy to dismiss obstacle avoidance as irrelevant outside of very specific scenarios. In that context, DJI did a great job with upgrading it for the Mavic 3. It made a really big difference for me while flying in tight spots, so I'm really glad to have it. I ended up testing these new sensors by playing Palm Tree Mario Kart, which went surprisingly well. I don't usually recommend trying to crash your drones, but from that experience, I can confirm the new obstacle avoidance will indeed make you feel like a Mario Kart pro. The 3 is highly responsive and has great control. The takeaway is that there's a big difference in the Cine's pathing and obstacle avoidance compared to the Mavic 2 Pro, which you can see at work in the firmware features like Return to Home, but more on that later. And there is one caveat about the Mavic 3's control. I'm a big fan of hand launching and catching my drones, if this wasn't already obvious, and this isn't always possible with the Mavic 3. Launching the drone is a breeze, but it's a bit jumpy when hand catching. Because I teach workshops off a boat, I'm going to hold off on using this drone with my attendees. It's just not worth the danger. I've heard similar stories from other Mavic 3 owners, so it seems like it's a common problem. This might be a good thing since it could prompt DJI to fix the bug sooner rather than later. Yay! It's finally time to talk about the big clunky elephant in the room, the 3's dual Hasselblad camera. In the past, you had to purchase a separate drone model like the Mavic 2 Zoom to get those tight shots. Now you have a built-in 28 times zoom, which initially sounds impressive. The issue is that it's a hybrid, with the quality taking a nosedive as soon as you reach the digital zoom. Nose diving and drones don't get along on the best of days, much less when it's a drone meant for professional use. As fun as it is to pretend you're a super spy and zoom in on faraway targets, this isn't a drone that's just for fun. Unfortunately, I can't see myself ever using the full 28x zoom for any serious content. 
After trying it, the telephoto lens honestly feels unfinished. Digital zoom aside, it doesn't record 4K at 60 frames per second or 128 frames per second. It doesn't shoot RAW or DNG, and the whole feature is tucked away in the explore mode. Given the Mavic 3's rushed release date, I wouldn't be surprised if it really is unfinished. I mean, we did get a boost in image sharpness with the most recent update, which was nice, but not quite enough to, you know, tip the scales. 28 times digital zoom is a hard sell for professional content. No, hard pass. Hard pass. Regardless, it has let me capture some cool clips that would have been impossible otherwise. And it does deserve some credit for that. In professions like the public safety sector, there's clearly a use case for the 28 times zoom in search and rescue missions, which wouldn't be fair to ignore. I don't do public safety, but even I can get some use out of it by using it to scout out locations. When it comes to sensor specs, the default camera's 4 thirds inch sensor is the one worthy of attention. This larger sensor lets the 3 capture low light content better than any of the Mavics before it. That part might not mean anything to those of us who usually work in the golden hour or during broad daylight, but the larger sensor also means you're getting better photo quality overall. In particular, I was impressed by how it handled noise at higher ISO. The image quality is very sharp, even at the highest levels. Yay! As painful as the price tag is, I don't want to imply that the Cine is overpriced. It really isn't. At least from the perspective of a professional drone pilot, it includes enough extra features to make it worth the price tag. You're paying for tangible features like Apple ProRes 422, the smart controller, and the one terabyte solid state drive. The idea behind the price is that a professional pilot can earn that money back, which has definitely held true in my case. When I don't need to use ProRes for a job, I prefer to shoot in 5.1K at H.264 in normal mode. It may not get as much dynamic range as log mode, but it looks great right out of the camera. The files are smaller, and the clips are still high quality and pop with color. All in all, the Mavic 3 has tons of quality of life features that make sense for professional content creators. Take the ability to shoot in only raw format, for example. That's a priceless change if you are used to, you know, working with large amounts of footage. Thank you! The much-awaited firmware was meant to be the thing that tips the scale in favor of the Mavic 3 and not any of the other Mavic models. For me, it kind of does and it kind of doesn't. I'm already sold on the Cine based on its other features, but the firmware isn't that impressive on its own. It's mostly the same features slapped onto a better drone with a better camera. Man, that sucks! Why? Yeah, I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm not good. I'm gonna talk to some people, straighten this out, man. Spotlight 2.0, Point of Interest 3.0, Quick Shots, Hyperlapse, and Master Shots fall into that category. If you've owned Mavic drones before, you probably know what all of these are already. I want to emphasize that these are still good, useful features that make the Mavic 3 more worthwhile. Yes, I know I just tore into the Cine's firmware update, but these features are elevated purely by being on a better drone. We've seen them in action before, and we already know how much potential they have. But we were promised upgrades to some of these features, so I was excited to see how they would fare now that they are on the Mavic 3. Let's start with the Focus Track Intelligent Flight Modes. They can all be accessed easily in the same menu after selecting a target and are designed to make certain shots easier to take. Spotlight is the most straightforward out of all these, since its entire job is just keep the camera trained on the subject. The drone controls the camera movement, you control the drone movement, and both stationary and moving targets get way easier to film. Point of interest is not quite the reverse, but it's close. You select a target and the drone will automatically start orbiting it while you retain control over the gimbal and the distance from the subject. Just like Spotlight 2.0, Point of Interest 3.0 is the same version that was on the Air 2S. The Mavic 3 may be a stronger drone with a better camera, but these two intelligent flight modes are functionally the same. The Active Track 5.0 is the biggest upgrade. Out of all the iterations of Active Track, the latest update on the newest drone has the best performance by far. In this mode, the drone takes care of everything, from flying to camera control, and you just need to select the target. It's meant to be used to follow moving objects. Ultimately, it does a much better job of tracking its targets while also allowing for more customization in the form of different angles. The downside is that the drone flies uncomfortably close while following its target, sacrificing good shots. You'll mostly see the target you're tracking in the ground. Oh, 
The Mavic 3 didn't receive quick shots, panorama mode, and burst shooting until the January update, but now that we have them, I have to say I'm pleased with all of these shooting modes the 3 offers. Panorama mode lets you take wide shots and high resolution. I always manually stitch my panoramas together so that I have the freedom to enlarge parts of the image for an emphasis to make it larger than life. Of course, if I need to deliver content to clients quickly, or I just don't want to edit the photos as much, this will be a great help. Yes! 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 First shooting is more applicable to my own work since it's essential when capturing footage of surfers or other action sports. Hyperlapse, quick shots, and master shots are the same as we've gotten before. Again, the Mavic 3 elevates these features. The better camera means better results for both features, and the longer battery life means you have more creative freedom when creating hyperlapses. That's a great improvement for anyone who makes hyperlapses on a regular basis. Quick shots, droney, rocket, circle, helix, boomerang, and asteroid is a DJI classic at this point, and the Mavic 3 just continues that legacy. For a couple months, I was having major issues with GPS locking in on my home point. Sometimes it would take up to 10 minutes to connect to enough satellites, but I feel like this has been resolved with the recent firmware update. I know this hasn't been the case for everyone, so if this is you, please share below. DJI's Fly app also received an update at the same time as the Mavic 3 got its firmware update. The camera settings had been moved to a centralized area on the screen, which was a game changer for me. I can access the settings so much faster now, and the layout is just better overall. Dear God, it's beautiful. I think the delay in firmware releases is the biggest reason why the Mavic 3 received so many mixed reviews, which actually bodes well for the drone's acceptance post-February. We've received both planned firmware updates and another one assisting us with GPS connectivity issues. And they've gone a long way towards making the Cine an even more incredible drone. With all of its promised features now available, the Mavic 3 is on an even playing field with other fully released Mavic drones and can be judged based on all of its merits, not just some of its merits and speculation. I can't help but wonder if these firmware updates might continue past April to provide continued improvements for the Mavic 3. But at this point, the Cine has ended up as one of my favorite drones to date, thanks to its impressive collection of features and its focus on the professional drone flying scene. All things considered, I'm pleased with the Mavic 3 Cine and I've been putting it to great use out in the field. It does have room for improvement, but what drone doesn't? The Mavic 3 Cine has tons of features that make sense for professional content creators. If you are a professional pilot that needs ProRes, then buying this drone is a no-brainer, making this the ultimate compact professional drone to date. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on drone news and tips. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.